everyone, Rose here, and I'm back with a unicorn. My schedule has been a bit all over the place recently, and it's been a while since I uploaded a video, especially one with voiceover, and that's because a whole lot of stuff has been going on. I'm in the process of moving, I'm gonna start school in within the next month, actually. I got COVID, very, very mild, but I did have a cough that lasted really long. I was working on a really big commission that wouldn't really work for a video. So yeah, a whole lot of things have been going on. And a whole lot of things will continue to go on, so my upload schedule probably isn't gonna go back to being regular for a little while. But that's enough of my life. On to the actual topic of this video, the unicorn I painted. This isn't just any unicorn, this is specifically my character Snowbell. He's a good friend of my other character Blaze, but unlike Blaze, I pretty much haven't drawn any art of Snowbell. But recently I've kind of been writing down parts of Blaze's story, and so I felt kind of inspired to draw some of the other characters that exist in her life. I'm probably not going to be sharing the story I've been writing down anytime in the near future because I'm really not much of a writer, but I just wanted to get the ideas out of my head and like onto a piece of paper. Anyway, Snowbell is supposed to be a kind of boisterous, happy-go-lucky, but also quite elegant character, so I wanted to give him a very playful dynamic pose that contrasts with this painting I made of Blaze a week or two ago. I actually uploaded a mini time-lapse of that one as a short, so if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to that up in the card and in the description. As you can see, I spent a lot of time making tons of small thumbnail sketches to figure out a pose that really had the kind of energy I was looking for. I tried a couple of him rolling around on the ground, but I felt like those were too like, happy and playful and goofy and not quite enough elegant. And I messed around with some of him just like running or jumping and some of those had the opposite problem where they felt too like majestic and elegant and didn't quite capture the fact that he was a little bit of a derp. But with a whole bunch of trying out different thumbnails and a lot of different references of horses doing all kinds of different things, I eventually landed on one that I quite liked. I scaled that one up and on the same layer started refining the sketch a bit more, fixing some of the proportions and just adding in all the extra details that I had left out in the very tiny gestural pose sketch. And I also made some minor tweaks to the pose itself just to make sure it really had the exact kind of energy I wanted. This sketching phase is always a huge balancing act for me. If I go too precise with a sketch, I end up with very visible sketch lines in the final painting, which isn't something I want. Those can be quite distracting and just mess up the overall brushwork and rendering feel of the whole thing. But at the same time, I need the sketch as a guide for rendering and for where to put the colors and everything like that, because a lot of the time, if I don't make my sketch precise enough, then later while I'm painting, I'm just gonna end up being kind of confused about where I want something to be, or I end up with a thing that's nicely rendered but has slightly off proportions because I didn't make the proportions like precise and clear enough while sketching. Currently, the way I balance those things in my sketch is by doing the whole sketch on one layer and starting with a big brush just doing the very general flow and pose and gesture of the uh, sketch and then scaling it up and going in with an eraser and a smaller brush and as well as the selection tools to tweak the proportions and then add details to the parts that really need it and keep the parts that don't need to be a specific just less specific, more loose and gestural in the sketch. And this time I also just already added a couple of shadows to the sketch. Not really for any particular reason, I just felt like it. For this painting I didn't bother with 
any kind of like small thumbnails to try out different compositions and backgrounds. I had a rough idea of what I wanted and I just kind of made a sketch, figured it worked and then went with it. What I did do though is paint in my values in this kind of yellowish brown color. You might have seen it in some of my paintings that I did this kind of thing with black and white. But for this one, I just thought, wouldn't it be kind of fun and quirky if I did that in, like, brown? And I also figured that the entire painting would end up being very cool colored, because it's like blue sky, green grass and trees, and a white unicorn, and that, as a subject, always ends up looking quite cool. So I figured maybe using warmer colors to painting the values first would allow some of those warm colors to shine through a bit. That didn't really work out well in this painting. I think it might have been better if I had actually just used a very bright warm color for that, some kind of like orange or reddish even, and yellows. Either way, this process just sort of made it take longer for me to get the colors I wanted. I sort of started out with this very gloomy, I'd say, green and like gray sky looking image and slowly built up the brighter uh, greens and blues to reach the point that I wanted. And there isn't really anything there from the uh, warm colors I used to begin with, so wasn't really worth it. Either way, I continue into my rendering process, using the color picker as always to pick and move around colors and using layers with like overlay and multiply to deepen shadows and add more bright colors where I feel they're needed, especially blues in this case. But once I've gotten the effect I want from a certain kind of layer, I try to merge everything down and like keep it to the minimal amount of layers that I need. So I have essentially one layer for the character, one for the background, and one for a little bit of grass in the foreground. At this point I realized that the easiest way to get rid of that weird like gloomy too brown feeling that was bothering me was just to make the sky blue instead of grey. And then I took that same blue again using an overlay layer just to add a little bit more like saturation and coolness to a whole bunch of the image and that instantly made it feel a lot less gloomy. Recently while painting I've been trying to work on my brushwork, like trying to keep a more loose lively sort of feel to it and I downloaded a couple of brushes recently that really helped me with that. I've linked them in the description below. They're really helpful because they're very pleasant to draw large loose brush strokes with because they have a little bit of color jitter which just adds a little bit of liveliness and they also have this nice texture to them and a little bit of a streakiness kind of like an actual paintbrush. I still need to actively remind myself to not make my brush too small and to use nice big brush strokes in different directions but it's a lot like it comes a lot more naturally with these brushes I found. Like, I've made a couple of paintings with them. It's not as visible with this one, I think, but some of the other art I've made while messing around with them, I've really enjoyed, like, the brushwork I got from them. Now, obviously, brushes aren't gonna suddenly teach you how to paint, and, like, artists will constantly say the tools don't matter, and it's really about like what you do with them and such but I do think having nice tools that feel good to use and like have a certain something to them can really like spice up the process or make stuff easier or smoother or just really improve the results. And speaking of things that can really improve your result, references. References are super important for art in general, uh, especially in this case with a creature design like this my unicorns are based on a combination of like horses and deer especially but just also some other antelopes in general especially with the horns and those are animals with kind of weird anatomy like especially horses just half of their leg is just a finger like a singular finger they just don't have other fingers it's just like one big toenail they're running on they're very weird 
but anyway it's very hard if not impossible for you to make an artwork that's based on a deer and a horse if you've never seen a deer and a horse like you need to have actually seen those animals to understand how they work and how they look and like what poses their bodies can even be in so the more familiar you are with uh different animals the better you're going to be able to draw them and the better you're also going to be able to draw creatures that are kind of based on them so it can be really useful to take time to like really study certain animals in depth and like learn about their anatomy and stuff but even just having a bunch of photos of them from different angles and different poses doing different movements is really really useful to help you make a better artwork so i always have PureRef open on my other screen with a whole bunch of references that are relevant to the thing that I'm painting. In this case, I had a whole bunch of different pictures of deer, I had a whole bunch of pictures of horses, especially horses like in all kinds of playful poses, especially like a couple of the ones that I messed around with earlier as sketches and then abandoned. I have references for those, though I didn't really end up using them much. I have a bunch of references from horse of horses from behind because I am looking at the character from more or less behind. You have a whole bunch of references of horses like running and bucking and jumping to sort of be able to capture that kind of movement. I have several references of horses with like their manes flowing in the air to get that sort of vibe. I have a couple of references of deer like looking at their faces, how those are built, especially comparing those to horses to mix and match which features I want from which. I have references of how their hooves look and how just generally their legs are constructed. Like I mentioned, horses have these weird legs and I wanted to kind of see like how their anatomy compares to say deer because I wanted, I know I wanted unicorns to have like cloven hooves, so it's two separate toes but their general body plan is more similar to a horse so i had a bunch of references of these two kinds of animals next to each other so i could compare and see how i could best mix and match those two i also have references of several different like white colored animals just to see how to light and shade um the fur on our boy snowbell and i have references of a couple of antelope for like inspiration for how I want the horn to look. And even outside of the character himself, I have a whole bunch of pictures of forest clearings and forest edges to sort of give me an idea of how the whole scene should look and how the trees in the background should look and like the blend between the grassy meadow area and the big dark forest full of trees. I have references for a couple of different like meadows and what kind of flowers you see in meadows. I even have a couple of references that are in photos but instead like other paintings to give me an idea of how like what colors look to good together in a painting and what's nice brushwork to use for fur or for like plants. So yeah really every aspect of this painting and really most of my paintings at least the ones that i spend time on is referenced in some way or at least i have available references for it in some kind of way and i'd highly highly recommend that like before you start on an art project be that a 2d artwork or a 3d artwork go online like on pinterest or just google image search a whole bunch of pictures that are related in some way to the thing you're trying to make and put them somewhere where you can reference them while painting. I personally highly 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 recommend PureRef, I'll put a link to that in the description. That's essentially like one big canvas or like pin board you can just pin all your images to so you don't have to switch between tabs to look at them, you can just see them all at once. And then I'll also put a link to Illusion in the description below. That's not as useful while you're drawing, but it's a very good program to organize all your references. It allows you to essentially take a folder full of images and assign all of them individual tags. So you can just look up a quick search term and all the images you have tagged that way will show up so you can easily find the things you need for a specific project. Both of these programs are free. 
I'll put a link down in the description for you guys if you're interested in downloading them. Anyway, that's all for me on references and just in time because the painting's complete too. And here it is all done. I actually didn't quite like it at first when I finished it, but I took another look at it the next day and made a couple of very minor tweaks and it's actually pretty alright. I'm actually quite happy with it. I don't know, maybe I've just been looking at it for a bit too long and was a bit tired or something. Either way, it's been nice making some art for one of my characters that hasn't gotten that much love. I hope you guys have enjoyed the time lapse and the voiceover and maybe even learned a thing or two. Anyway, that's been all for me for today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and take a look down in the description for the things I mentioned earlier. Like I said in the beginning, I still have a whole bunch of stuff going on, so my upload schedule isn't going to become regular anytime soon, but still, see y'all next time.